Hi, this is Misha, and this is part one in our series on the FNFAL. About five years ago, we did an, a video, kind of a long compilation video on the FAL. Well, I wanted to revisit it. A lot of time's gone by, and you know, a lot of experiences, new guns, some guns sold. I just thought we'd revisit, you know, one of the definitely most iconic battle rifles of the 20th century. In my hands is an Israeli light barrel, what is called by uh, kind of uh, contraction the Romat, which is a contraction of the two Hebrew words that stand for a self-loading rifle. So they called this the Romat. Well, the, the, the origins of the FAL really date back to before World War II. And uh, the inventor, Dudenev Sev, or Savre, started work and in 1940, his work was interrupted on a self-loading rifle because Nazis. After Belgium was liberated and he returned to the FN plant, he started work again in 1946. And by 1947, he had a prototype in 7.92 Kurs, which was the round that the STG-44 fired. We have a video on the STG-44, by the way, if you'd like to check that out. But that was considered the wave of the future, an intermediate round and a, uh, you know, assault-type rifle. In 1948, the British tested it out, and then other yeah, new members of the new NATO started to test it out around 1950. Around that time, the U.S. suggested that the FN rechamber the gun to fire its new 30 caliber light rifle cartridge, which was 762 by 51 which eventually became 762 NATO. Before that time, FN had done, as I said, 8mm curves, 7.92 curves. They also did these in uh, .280 British, which was a, you know, about a 6 some odd mil, 6.5 give or take millimeter uh, intermediate cartridge. But because America wanted it, uh, FN agreed to rechamber the FAL for that cartridge. Well. These, the FAO was first released, at least to, you know, announced in a prototype shown in 1951, and it went into standard production in 1953. Several versions were made, and we'll get through them throughout this series, but the one in my hands, the Israeli light barrel, in 1955, Israel was one of the early adopters of the FAL, and as a result, it, the versions it used were, had a lot of early features. These were already in combat by 1956 and did see use in the Suez Crisis. They would continue to be used during the Six Days War and the Yom Kippur Crisis of uh, 1971. <clears throat> so, starting at the muzzle of the uh, Israeli FAL, we have just a standard crowned 21 inch, pretty light profile barrel. We have a lug here for attaching a bayonet. We have this, the original style tall sights. Now, originally the Israeli FALs were all FN made, but as parts wore out and as time went on, IMI started making parts for these. And this is an IMI gas block with the solid ears. The original Belgians would have the open ear gas block. This has an adjustable gas system. There's a plug here that you can set for either rifle grenade or standard fire. It also has a 13 position regulator here, so you can configure it for the types of ammo. The Israeli guns, the early ones used the, the Belgian style handguards, but soon they would go to these very unique Israeli style that have these metal heat shields here, and then the wood panels, and then they're open on the top with these spacer rings. This is a short stroke gas piston system. Moving back, we've got a tilting bolt in here, pretty standard, by today's standards. Bolt hold open with a manual release. We've got a folding caulking handle. Now, excuse me, a folding uh, carry handle. Now, the Israeli version is solid. This handle, the polymer, is actually melded to the steel rod so it doesn't rotate. The Belgian versions, the handle itself would rotate. We have the tall rear sight here. Flipping it over, we have an Israeli Type C buttstock that has the ferrule here. These Israeli stocks are shorter by and large. They did have longer ones, but they mostly were shorter. 
There's no, it's a solid butt plate, no trap door for a cleaning kit. This has a later style takedown lever, which is horizontal. The early ones were vertical. This has the Romat selector, which is safe and semi only. This is fire here. Safe is up, and it cannot rotate any further because of a stock. This was done on the Romats. We have a large Israeli style cocking handle. This actually can be pressed in to be used as a forward assist kind of handy I guess in the desert. The bolt is sand cut as well. Not in the British style, it is smooth on the carrier, but there are cutouts in the bottom to let sand drain into the receiver. Now this is of course a semi-auto. This receiver was made by SBL, Stutchner's Brothers Limited. And what they did, they took uh, raw FN forgings, Belgian forgings, and they machined them out. This has quasi type 1 cuts. Some of them are left as type 3. I think there were even some type 2's, but these are originally just raw receivers. Now I've read that these imports were either made, some people say they were made, they were built up in Israel. Now they were using an original Israeli light barrel kit and this SBL receiver. Other people say that they were, the receivers were brought over to the USA as raw receivers. This blank Virgin receivers and they were assembled by Arms Corps here in the USA. Either way, you've got all original Israeli parts on an Israeli machined out receiver, which is kind of neat. These came in in 1987 and 1988. They were kind of one of the more economy choices for FALs at the time. They're cheaper than the Belgians, but I think they're really neat. I like the um, the lugged barrel and I like the early features like the tall sights. These do by the way store a cleaning kit and the pistol grip. Yeah. The bayonet for these is quite interesting. It um here. It doubles as the flash hider for the weapon, hence the prongs. Put it on here. It just goes onto the lug like any other uh, bayonet lug would. Fits pretty tight. There we go. And that's it on the barrel. Now what's interesting, when the gun fires, the bayonet actually recoils forward. And this was done in an attempt to keep the bayonet from altering the gun's point of impact. I'm not sure how successful it was, but it's a neat notion. And that doubling also is the flash hider, is kind of a unique feature of this gun. Now in addition to that lug mounting the bayonet, it could also mount a grenade launcher. Complete with built-in sights. So this would just clamp right onto the lug, same as the, uh, the bayonet would. The Israeli FALs were in service through the 70s, but they had problems with them. They would always complain that they, um, that they uh, would uh, jam and weren't as reliable in sand and dirt as, say, the Kalashnikov. To be fair, though, in the deserts of the Middle East, virtually every gun ever made would jam. I think the real problem was, by the standards of the 70s, this was a very heavy and long rifle. And again, most of the Romats were semi-only. So you have a semi-only, 20-round magazine-fed gun that's very heavy and cumbersome, and you're going up against enemies that are armed with Kalashnikovs. So I think that was part of the problem. Well, we'll move on. Well, to go along with the Romat light barrel, Israel also adopted a heavy barrel version of the FAL. Now, in Belgium, this was called the FALO, or FALO, which stood for, you know, basically light machine gun. And um, Israel is one of the few nations that actually adopted this. A lot of nations would not adopt the, uh, the heavy barrel FAL. But Israel probably used it more than anyone else. And this is very similar to the light barrel in a lot of ways, but it has some key differences, too. We still have a 21-inch barrel, but it's much heavier, especially under the handguards here. 
As you can tell, it has a different style of flash hider, the birdcage. We have a bipod here. It's not quite detachable, but it's pretty easy to remove with one screw, which is handy for storage. The hand guards are larger, but otherwise very similar. Still have the spacer ring up on top, although it only uses one and it's a half moon shape as, as opposed to a full circle. This one here has the original Belgian style gas block. Some other heavy barrels would have the replacement IMI one. It's open here. The carry handle is similar but different. It um, is larger as you see and it faces forward for a better point of balance because of the heavier weight out front. The rear sight is similar, but instead of only going out to 600 meters, this one goes up to 7. A little longer range, it slides a little further forward on this ramp here. The buttstock does not have a ferrule. And it has a flip up shoulder rest butt plate. Flipping her around here if I can. That's pretty well similar, showing you the three position selector. Whereas the Romat was fire down here and then safe in the middle only, the Maculon, 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 whatever you want to call it, sorry, which is another abbreviation that basically meant light machine gun in Hebrew, would also have a third position that slid up there. This was full auto. Still has the forward assist bolt handle. Now, some of you who really know Israeli FALs will recognize that my Romat still has what is often called the heavy barrel cocking handle. There is some debate on that if the smaller ones were exclusively used on the light barrel and the heavy ones on the heavy barrel, or if it's just, just a product improvement that was used later as a you know beefier part. This gun here is built on an Imbel Type 3 receiver and it was built in the 80s by Springfield. So it is another pre-band gun, although this was definitely assembled in the USA from an Israeli kit by Springfield on a, be a Brazilian made receiver. Still a very good gun. I've got a 30 round mag in it. From what I've been able to determine, Israel really just used 20 round mags, but it's a light machine gun, it's my gun, it's a video. I thought I would just put a 30 round mag in it to make it look neat, really. As far as the sling that's on here, the other one had an Israeli sling. This is actually an Australian sling, which is the same exact pattern, but this one is longer for the L2, which was the Australian light machine gun, and we'll get to it in a later video. But since this is also a heavy bear, I wanted to put the longer sling, which is a little more versatile for what this is. So, a little bit of personalization there, I suppose. It also stores a cleaning kit and the pistol grip like the light barrel. The Maculions would serve alongside the Romats in the IDF throughout the 50s and 60s and um, would actually be retired out earlier. This, um, the heavy barrel FNFALO wasn't very successful. It it, you know, it's a little bit better at sustained fire, but it doesn't have a quick change barrel. There was also a weird thing with these 30 round mags where it would jam or fail to feed after the second shot, which never really was figured out why that was happening. It just, it was kind of in a lot of ways the worst of both worlds. It's heavier, bulkier than the light barrel. Yes, it does full auto. It probably can sustain fire a little bit longer, but since you don't have the quick change, the barrels will overheat didn't really have that much more accuracy or range. Same length of the barrel, 21 inches. So that's why a lot of nations just kind of ignored the, the light barrel FAL. It just didn't make a lot of, uh, I mean, not the light barrel, the, uh, the light machine gun version of the FALO. It just didn't make a lot of sense for them. Israel did use them, but it seems like they surplus these faster than they surplus the light barrels. But um, still a really neat thing, and these are about the most common FALO types on the market. 
just for reference, in the FN catalog, uh, wood stocked version was called the 50.42, and the polymer stocked version made in Belgium was called the 50.41. Well, these were the two major Israeli variants of the FAL, and again, they were kind of takeoffs from the early Belgian style. And this was part one of our FAL video, we'll have several others. But if you have any questions, uh, please post them below, and we'll be happy to chat FALs with you. This is Misha, and we'll catch you next time.